Hey guys, JK Tabletop War Games. So, I've got a battle report for you. This is playing the General Darmé rules. Um, had a game the other week of them and uh, love the rules, really good. So, I've done the first turn. I'll show you what happened. So, I rolled for ADC availability um, and I put one ADC on the Hanoverians for a reroll, an ADC on the Brits for a reroll, and an ADC on the cavalry. Um, I rolled command, the Hanoverians were fine, the British brigade with the cannon were hesitant so they can't move, even with the re-roll they still failed so they couldn't move, the cavalry passed, the Highlanders passed and so did the skirmishers. On the French side, the uh, both columns moved up, one in the town, one to there. Another column moved up, both units of cavalry, the lancers, which are freshly painted, and the chasseurs, both were hesitant, so they couldn't move at all this turn. The cannon, uh, the French rolled two ADCs available to them, and they put it on the cannon um, for an assault battery fire. Um, in the shooting phase, the Brits were first, and the only thing that fired was the cannon. Now, because they were hesitant, he had a minus two um, to his shooting and a further minus one for being a small gun battery. So he had minus three off the result, rolled nine, went down to a six, and that caused one casualty on this column. And then the only other thing on the French side was the cannon fired at the cavalry and caused a casualty from the two extra dice that he got. But on his main 2d6 roll, he rolled a three or less on effective range and actually caused a casualty to himself. So that's it for the first round. So I'm going to get into a couple of turns um, and then I'll show you some live action gameplay. Okay then guys, turn two, the French got the initiative and um, the first thing that happened was the chasseurs charged the skirmishers which were here, so they moved to within three inches. The skirmishers had to take a discipline test which they passed on a seven, so they had to fall back 18 or fall on friendly supports. So, so the skirmishers have fallen behind friendly supports. So, the first thing in the shooting phase is this line here. I'm going to shoot into the Highlanders. They're in range within 9 inches. So it's a 2d6 roll. I've checked, there's no modifiers. So this is just a straight up 2d6 roll. But it will be on the inferior volley chart because they've changed from a column into a line. That one's cocked. 6, 7, 8. So eight on the inferior volley line is two casualties. So that's a pretty good roll. So they, Highlanders, have taken two casualties. So we'll just put that dice by them, just to remind us. <coughs> now, the French column are gonna fire into the British column ahead of them. They're in range, they don't get any bonuses, if they were within three inches um, and they counted as fresh, they would get um, a plus one casualty dice, but they're not. Uh, the Brits aren't in cover or anything, so we've got no minuses, there's no casualties. So again, just a straight up 2d6 roll. Five, six, seven. On the inferior volley line, because they moved, is one casualty. So... That line takes a casualty. So this is pretty good shooting from the French. And then the same thing with this column, shooting into the Hanoverians, but the fence does provide cover, so it's a minus one off this 2d6. So we got five, six, seven, eight, nine, so an eight on the inferior volley is two casualties. So the French putting out quite a lot of casualties. So the last bit of shooting is the cannon. The cannon is going to fire into the Highlanders. They are at effective range. So we've got a 2d6 roll. 
minus one for being a small gun battery and minus one for the hedges that are covering the Highlanders. So we are looking at a minus two on this result. So we got a five, minus two is three. So a three at effective range for the cannon is not good. FC, a fatigue casualty, which has already happened to the cannon, so it goes up to two. Now in this game, all units have um, eight casualties. So normally in bigger games, you would they would be 10 or 12. Once they get to their max, the unit's destroyed. Okay, so that's it for the French shooting. So not bad for them. So I'll come back after the British do their shooting. Okay, so the British turn for shooting. This line is going to shoot into the column. Now, they're not within three inches, so they're not going to get a bonus. So we've got a 2d6 roll. They did move right up to the fence, so it's going to be on the inferior volley. Basically, when you shoot, if you don't move, um, you're on the standard volley. Or for British, you'd be on the superior volley. If you move, you're on the inferior volley. So you do get penalised for moving. But obviously, you want to get into range. So they haven't taken enough casualties to have any minuses off this result. Um, so it's just a standard 2d6 roll. Uh, double ones. Good job that wasn't a cannon because that'd be low ammunition. So a two or less uh, inferior volley is fire discipline. So basically that unit's lost its fire discipline and it can't move next turn if it wants to recover from that. So that's not too good for them. So this column is going to shoot into the French column. So we've got our 2d6 roll, <clears throat> excuse me, just looking for any, nope there's no minuses, column or massed infantry in columns, well no we're not playing that size of a game. So again it's just going to be a straight up 2d6 roll, 5, 6, 7, 8 on the inferior volley is two casualties. There, two casualties. So that column takes two casualties. So the Brits are getting some payback now. This second column will shoot into the same same guys. No penalties, straight up 2d6. Six, seven, eight. So that's another two casualties. Exactly the same result. So they're up to four casualties. So four more. And they could be gone. Okay. The cannon is going to shoot directly into the column as well. I've measured it. They're at effective range. Now, we get a minus one because we're acting as a four-gun battery. Um, we are shooting at a column, so we get a plus one casualty dice. So we get an extra chance to try and cause a casualty which is separate from the 2d6 roll. Um, oh, column or line deployed. Oh, actually, in yeah, so that's right. Um, they're not in cover. So it's just a minus one off this result then from the cannon. So we've got a five, minus one is four. At effective range, a four is nothing. Nothing of note, so the columns got away from it, got away with it. Okay, the Highlanders, devils in the skirts, they're going to shoot at these grey coats that are concealed by the bush. So we've got a 2d6 roll again, but it is going to be minus one because they're in cover. We haven't taken enough casualties yet to cause any um, minuses on our roll. And they haven't moved this turn because they used a forward order move last turn, which meant they couldn't shoot, but this turn they will be able to. So this will be on the superior volley. So a five uh, minus one because of the cover is four. So a four on the superior volley is one casualty. They've already got one on them, so they go up to two. 
like that. So they've got two casualties on them. The 95th Rifles um, can't fire through their own troops and they're not in range of that column there. So that is going to be it for the British shooting. I'll come back in the next turn and I'll actually show you me rolling uh, for ADCs and command. Okay, so how ADCs work. Um, I've got four brigades. So I've got the Hanoverians as one brigade. The Brits and the Cannon is the second brigade. The Cavalry is our third brigade. And the Highlanders and the 95th together for this game acts as our fourth. So we've got four dice to roll for ADCs. You need three or more to be successful. So I'll roll these. And we only get two, because we rolled two there. So we've got two ADCs available to us. ADCs you can use to put on units for a re-roll when you do your command rolls. Or you can use them to attach a general that can take casualties off and help you in close combat. Um, all sorts of things. As we've only got two, I'm going to put one on the British as a command re-roll and I'm going to put one on the cavalry as a command re-roll because I really want to make a charge with them. The French will roll for their four brigades. I'll do that in a second. And then we'd roll for command. So I'll just quickly show you me rolling for command. So the Hanoverians, again, it's three plus or more and they're successful. So the Hanoverians, they're fine, they scored a four. The British, they scored a five, so they didn't need the ADC. If they'd rolled a one or two, they could have re-rolled the result because we put an ADC on them. So they're fine. The Cavalry, they're fine, just. And then the Highlanders and the 95th are fine. Now, if we'd rolled any ones or twos on any of these brigades, they would be hesitant. So they wouldn't be able to move, but they can still fire, but with penalties. Um, now, the Hanoverians were hesitant last turn. Um, so luckily, they didn't cause any casualties on the French um, from their shooting, because they, they would have a minus two, because their camp was being unformed if you're hesitant. So that's fine. So the British have got no hesitant. So when I roll for initiative, which is 2d6, to see who get, goes first the next turn, there would be no minuses because we don't have any hesitant brigades. So that's the British, they're fine. I'm going to do the French and then I'll come back after that. Okay guys, so the French got the initiative even though they had a hesitant brigade. So the Lancers charged in the charge phase which comes before movement and they were within 12 inches of the Highlanders. Now because they were out of 12 inches, the Highlanders could do a discipline test to attempt to form square, which they passed on seven or more. So that makes it really hard for the cavalry to win in the charge phase. So basically, I've rolled their dice. The French Lancers scored 10 with their modifiers. They got plus one for being lancers versus infantry and plus one for veteran. The square rolled and they had plus one for being, um, oh sorry, they got plus two for being infantry in square versus cavalry. Now the British had nine and the French had 10. So the French won by one. And then what we do is look up the charge results and you can see that Cavalry versus square, if they won by one, cavalry retire and take one casualty, and the square stands where it is and loses one casualty. So the square's gone up to three casualties. These guys now have to retire, which would be 18 inches, or if there's a friendly unit, they can fall behind. Now for the first six inches, they go forward, but then they can use a 45 degree arc. So the lancers are gonna be behind here, behind friendly supports, um, and they have taken a casualty doing that. So when a unit's in a square like that, they need six or more 
to win by six or more the cavalry and the infantry would just be ridden down and they would have won but they didn't okay so i'll come back in the after the movement phase also guys i forgot to say this infantry column charged this british column in closing fire the brits got to fire but they got a fire discipline the french uh, rolled eight but they had minus one on their results so they went down to a seven and the british had uh, eight so the french lost their charge by one which meant that basically the attacker got to volley uh, with one casualty dice uh, because they were in column and the defender stands where they are now I rolled the casualty dice didn't cause any casualties so nothing happens and they stay in those positions so now I will go into the movement phase okay guys we are back so these Hanoverians have stayed still because they want to be on the standard volley chart these Hanoverians are flanking around the buildings um, the French formed into a line there these Brits formed into a line. Cavalry moved up. I actually forgot to charge them. <laughs> a bit embarrassing. And the skirmishers have moved up, moved out from behind the square. And they're looking to shoot at the cannon or the cavalry. So we will go into these guys first, the Hanoverians, shooting into the French. Now, what I forgot to uh say it's on the chart it says half casualties if um, they're in columns or squares so I've got to remember that and if the target is in a built up area uh, the target is in a built up area so whatever casualties we cause on these this French line we have to half now we got no minuses on this result so it's just straight up 2d6 and we score a 4 now 4 on the standard volley it's fire discipline, so we don't even cause any casualties. And if they want to recover from that fire discipline, they have to stay still next turn. So that's a bit of a disaster for them. Now, this line will shoot into the column there. Now, the column... Ooh, are they within three inches? I don't think they are, but we'll check. We'll see. Let's have a look. Nope, they're not. Otherwise, we would have got a bonus casualty dice. So again, straight up 2d6 roll. Uh, four. Now, this will be on the inferior volley because they moved. So a four is fire discipline. So this is not a good shooting for the Brits. So they've now got a fire discipline. They got a fire discipline from shooting um, in the charge phase. So this is not good. Um, the square will shoot into this line, but I don't think we're gonna be in range. Yeah, if you're in a square, you only have a three inch range, so we can't shoot anyone. So we're gonna be the skirmishers. Now the skirmishers are the only guys that fire slightly different. So, because I've got a standard three to four skirmish bases, I know they're individual, but if they were on bigger bases, we get three casualty dice. Now we're gonna shoot into the cavalry there. No, we're gonna shoot into this line because they've already got casualties. They're in range. Now any fives or sixes will cause um, casualties. Nothing. It was worth a try. So it's pretty horrific shooting from the Brits um, so we're going to the French um, shooting and I just realised that the French had the initiative so they should have shot first but it doesn't matter guys um, so I'll go into the French shooting okay and we are back this uh, line infantry haven't moved and they're going to fire into the Highlanders in the square now if we look on the chart target is a square we get two casualty dice extra to try and cause some casualties. So we'll put them there. So first of all, we do a 2d6. Uh, there's no other minuses. So we'll roll this first. A five. Now five on the standard volley is one casualty. 
So these guys got to four, which is not good for them now because that will have bad effects on them. And then we pick up our two extra casualty dice that we got and we need fours or more. Uh, another one. So they're now up to five. So the square is not looking good. Now the cannon is going to have a go at the square. They're at effective range. Uh, so we are minus one for a four gun battery and we are shooting into a square so again it's kind of the same thing as the infantry we get two extra casualty dice so let's do our roll first on the effective range chart and we got a minus one on this result because we're a small battery so we rolled four five six seven minus one is six so six at effective range is one casualty so the square is now up to six this is not looking good for them and then we pick up our two other dice, looking for fours. And the square is dead. That's two more casualties. In this game, we're playing up to eight. So six, seven, eight. So the square has been destroyed. And that will give the French two victory points. So even though the square was good to resist the cavalry charge, they've been caught out. Um, and destroyed so that's pretty good for the French so we will go over to this line here and they are going to fire into the Hanoverians so we've got 2d6 these guys haven't moved and they have no casualties they're just minus one off this result because of the fence covering the Hanoverians so they roll five six seven minus one is six so a six on a standard volley is one casualty. So the Hanoverians go up to three. And then this. So this column. Shooting into the column straight ahead of them. Now, they are within three inches. So we're going to get our 2d6 roll. Uh, we have four casualties on this column though, so we are minus one on our result. And then our target is a column at three inches and fire as a fresh. We are not a fresh unit, so we don't get that bonus because we've got four casualties. If we had three, we'd count as being fresh. So we are just minus one off this result. So a four minus one is three on a standard volley. A three is fire discipline. So they take a fire discipline, this unit, and they will not be able to move next turn. Um, any more shooting? No, that is shooting. So now we go back um, to the start and roll for ADCs. I'll do that off camera. And then uh, I'll come back in the charge phase. Okay guys, so we've got a bit of uh, cavalry versus cavalry action in the centre of the battlefield. So, the chasseurs rolled 11 for their charge roll, and the Brits rolled 11. But, I just because I had supports behind, I could re-roll one dice, and I chose two, and I scored 12. So... The chasseurs only lost by one, which meant that there's going to be an actual combat and we moved to contact and in the combat phase that will be four. Um, the French got the initiative. Um, their command rolls, the infantry and the cannon did become hesitant um, and so did the lancers, so they've not got much in action. This French line... Uh, sorry, this French column changed into a line, and these guys have stood still. Uh, the British, these were hesitant, so that uh, sorry, these had a fire discipline, so they had to stay still. Same with these two uh, line and column, so they couldn't do much. Um, the cannon stayed still for best shooting. Um, what I forgot to say, when the square was destroyed, because the 95th were part of that brigade, they had to take a, a faulted test. So you roll 1d6, they scored a 1, 
uh, which meant they had to retire. So they had to retire full 18 inches back and they, they lost a stand, so basically two guys. Um, so they can't do anything. Um, oh, and they, they were also hesitant, um, so they can't move this turn. So it's going to go into the French shooting. Um, so I'll see you in a sec. So a bit of a recap here, guys. The French line caused another casualty on the Hanoverians. Uh, the French line that was here uh, caused this another two casualties on this unit. They had to take a discipline test. They needed a seven to pass it, but they rolled a five and they became unformed. Um, in the British shooting, because they were unformed, they had a minus two to their shooting, but they put enough shots into that line and this British line to destroy it. They were up to their max of eight, so they were destroyed. So it's two victory points all at the moment. The cannon fired at effective range and caused two casualties on the chasseurs. And that is it for the shooting phase. So we're going to go into the combat phase or melee phase. Now, we get five dice standard. One, two, three, four, five. I'll just grab my sheet quick. Where are we? Yeah. So, we are chasseurs. So, they don't get any bonuses. Uh, they haven't got general attached. So there's no, uh, yeah, they just get their standard five, the French. And the British, because they are a morale grade above, they get an, an extra dice, which I'll grab. And also, because they are classed as, no, they're not elite. Yep, so that's it. So, we'll... Uh, Roll for the combat. So we'll do the British first. Now looking for four or more. Oh, that's a nice roll. So he's caused five casualties onto the chasseurs. So we'll put the dice there, five. And then the chasseurs get five dice to attack back. Four, five. And they are hitting on fours. Oh, and they also get not a bad roll. One, two, three, four. So they've caused four casualties, which puts these up to five. Now, because they cause four and we cause five, the chasseurs have lost by one. So if I look at the results table, losing by one or winning by one, the winner can take ground. Why won't that focus? Come on. Sorry guys, not going to do it. Come on. Do it. No, it's not going to do it. The winner takes ground, so basically the Dragoons can move into where the Chasseurs are, and the Chasseurs have to retire. Now they have to retire 18 inches back, but because they've got supports, friendly supports, they can fall behind them. They also take 1d3 casualties when they retire. So we'll roll that now. So basically that's a, a d6 halved. And it's 1. So they're up to 6. And they will retire behind their supports. Like so. And they take 6. And then Dragoons, if they want to, will move into there to take ground. And the supports just behind them. Okay guys, so I'm going to leave that there. Um, I am going to do a part two video to film the rest of the battle. So this is just a little taster for you. I'm really enjoying these rules. Um, slightly different from black powder. It's nice, I like playing different rule sets. So I hope you guys enjoyed, enjoyed that and um, I'll be back for part two. And um, I'll see you then. Cheers.